we're asked to select all of the equations for which y is a function of x. Let's begin by reviewing the definition of a function. A function is a relation that assigns each input exactly one output. And for this problem, each relation is an equation where the input variable is x and the output variable is y. For y to be a function of x, each x value or input must have exactly one corresponding y value or corresponding output. Using this definition, let's look at the first equation. We are given the equation x plus 4y equals 8, which we should recognize as a linear equation in standard form, but when determining whether we have y as a function of x, it's helpful to solve the equation for y if possible. Let's begin by solving this equation for y. We first isolate the y term by subtracting x on both sides. Simplifying, x minus x is zero. We have four y equals, let's write the right side as negative x plus eight. And now to solve for y, we divide both sides by four or divide each term by four. Simplifying, four divided by four is one. One times y is y. We have y equals, let's write this term as negative one-fourth x. And then we have plus eight divided by four, which is two. Now we have a linear equation in sloped-intercept form. And again, if this equation expresses y as a function of x for every x value, there can only be one corresponding y value. Notice for any x value that we select, the expression negative one-fourth x plus two will only give us one y value or one corresponding y value, and therefore this equation does express y as a function of x. But just to verify this, let's select one or two x values to determine the corresponding y value. For example, if we select x equals zero, the corresponding y value or output is y equals negative one-fourth times zero plus two, which is equal to zero plus two, or two, Notice for the input or x value of zero, the only corresponding output or y value is two. To avoid any fractions for y, let's also select x equals four, which is a multiple of the denominator. So if x equals four, we have y equals negative one-fourth times four plus two. Negative one-fourth times four is negative one. Negative one plus two is equal to positive one. Once again, for the input or x value of four, there's only one corresponding output or y value, which is y equals one. Which again is the reason why this equation represents y as a function of x. Next we have the equation y equals plus or minus x. But we should recognize right away that for any x value, there's going to be two corresponding y values because of the plus or minus, except when x equals zero. And therefore, this equation does not express y as a function of x. But again, let's verify this by looking at some ordered pairs that satisfy this equation using the table. If we select, let's say, x equals two, and then substitute two into the equation, we have y equals plus or minus two, which means y can be positive two or negative two when x is equal to two. So the x value of two has two corresponding outputs or corresponding y values, we can stop here because this does not express y as a function of x because the input of two does not have exactly one corresponding output or y value. Next we have the equation y equals five. This equation is different because it only contains one variable, the output variable. This is telling us that the x value or input can be any real number, but the output or y value must always be five. And because the output can only be five for any input, there's exactly one corresponding output, and therefore this equation does express y as a function of x. Going back to the table just for a moment, let's fill in the y column with five, because the equation tells us y must equal five. The input or x value can be any real number, for example, zero, one, two, three, four. Looking at the table, we can see that for any input or x value, there's exactly one corresponding output or corresponding y value. Y equals five does express y as a function of x. Our last equation is x equals negative two, which tells us the x value or input must always be negative two, 
because the equation does not contain y, the corresponding y value or output can be any real number, which means the input of x equals negative two has an infinite number of corresponding outputs or y values, which means x equals negative two does not express y as a function of x. If we go back to the table, because x equals negative two, we can fill in the x column with negative two. The equation does not contain y, which means, once again, the corresponding y value could be any real number. For example, zero, one, two, three, four. The table now easily shows the input of x does not have exactly one corresponding output or y value. It actually has an infinite number of corresponding outputs or y values, which again is the reason why x equals negative two does not express y as a function of x. I hope you found this helpful.